Praise the Lord, everyone. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. Truly, the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. We want to just give you an opportunity uh, to uh, share this video with your friends and your family as we begin our Bible study here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. We want to uh, give grace and glory and honor unto the Lord, for he is certainly good and his mercy endureth forever. I can truly say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And the scripture says, enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. And truly it's with thanksgiving and praise do we come to you today, lifting up the name of Jesus. The scripture says there is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved other than that precious, precious name of Jesus. So we certainly do thank and praise the Lord that uh, he has given us a means and a way of salvation. He gave up his life for you and I and he uh, met what he said when he said that I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So we uh, want uh, men and women and children everywhere uh, to repent and to uh, receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior and get baptized in his name and be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Truly, it's a life-changing experience. It's a life-changing experience that one will never forget. I shall never forget that day when Jesus washed my sins away. So we certainly do praise God and thank God uh, for salvation, for deliverance, for the joy that we have down on the inside. Uh, the world uh, has its own means of, of happiness and the world has its own means of, of expressed joy, so to speak. But there's nothing like the joy of the Lord. When you have the joy of the Lord, it <clears throat> doesn't matter what circumstance or what situation you're still going through or you go through, you're, there's still a peace, there's still a joy, there's still a happiness that lies within. It's a satisfaction, satisfied, satisfied with life, satisfied with uh, finding purpose, satisfied with uh, expressing a means with the Savior. So I'm so excited today that words cannot express. And I truly praise God for one day saving me, not only me, but those uh, whom I come in contact with, those who I fellowship with. And uh, I thank God for uh, the world that uh, one day will know Jesus, will one day know that he is the Savior, and one day know that he is the Deliverer. So as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, um, we want to certainly remember, as I said, the world, men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord himself will save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And let us pray uh, that God will continue to build us up and give us all that we need uh, that pertains to life and godliness. And as the scripture says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto us let us pray uh, that the lord will continue to put a hedge of protection about us uh, concerning the virus that is going around and all other diseases and let us pray for those that uh, have had bad news uh, whether uh, a medical report whether grief of, of death of a loved one uh, no matter uh, what people are going through, financial hardship, uh, but whatever the circumstance, whatever the situation, prayer changes things. 
And so let us pray one for another. Uh, pray for the love of the world. Pray that unity and love and peace will not only come to the church, uh, the physical church, but also to the world. Let us pray um, that uh, senseless uh, murder, senseless uh, deeds of, uh, of jealousy and, and lust, let us pray that those things be ceased and bind in the name of Jesus. The scripture says, where there's two or three that are gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing, the Bible says he will be in the midst. Let us pray, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we just say thank you. We praise you for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time in your precious and holy name. We pray, Lord, that you bless each and every request that's been made known. Remember men and women and children everywhere, Lord. You save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Lord, we pray that you magnify and manifest your great glory, your great power, that you open up our hearts and our understanding, that you lead us to that rock that is greater than we are. Hallelujah. Lord, that you strengthen us in our spirit and our soul and our bodies. We pray, Lord, that you bind every evil spirit, every demonic power that would come to hinder. Lord, we pray for the churches everywhere. Lord, that people uh, assume positions and people will come into their own purpose and calling that you have placed for them in the name of Jesus in the body of Christ. I pray, Lord, for health. I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance uh, in the name of Jesus. We pray for our children, Lord. We pray for those that are getting ready to go to school and those that are in school. We pray for the sick that are in the hospital. We pray, Lord, for finances. We pray for strength. We pray for the anointing. We pray for a revival. Even in this time and in this season, we pray, Lord, for renewed grace, for renewed strength. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, bless this Bible study on today as we conclude, Lord, kingdom salvation. Lord, we thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I'm certainly glad that you have joined us here on today uh, once again for our Bible study here at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, where I am the lead pastor, Suffragan Bishop uh, Frankie L. Quinn, and we certainly thank God for my lovely wife, Tracy Quinn, and the leadership here at uh, Christian Ministries. Uh, our goal, our goal is to pursue excellence until excellence is achieved. And uh, certainly our vision is to be a, a, a caring church, a caring fellowship, leading souls to Christ, strengthening members, strengthening families, making disciples, and equipping them for service and community ministry. And we certainly do take on our purpose with a vengeance. Our purpose is to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ through effective, responsible ministry and intentional, creative, dynamic fellowship. And we certainly do have some core values that we like to stand on and we value love, patience, persistence, sacrifice, and service. And we certainly uh, do thank God for each and every one of you. And uh, it's good to be uh, attached uh, to a church that believes. And we certainly do thank God for our virtual believers, that virtual members that have attached themselves unto us in this great ministry uh, so that we can do great things in the kingdom of God. I want to do great things. I came across a scripture that talked about doing great exploits, and that's found in the book of Daniel. And uh, that word great exploits just meaning uh, you're doing uh, those things which are good while resisting the evil. And uh, certainly uh, that should be the life of a Christian. That should be the life of one that wants to serve Jesus Christ. You want to do all that you can that is good while resisting the evil. And God calls that great exploits. God calls that great exploits. So we certainly want to do great things 
and the kingdom of God. We want to do great exploits. We want to do all that God has assigned us to do, uh, not murmuring, not complaining, being persistent, not abandoning our responsibilities in the midst of fire or the midst of danger. Uh, we certainly want to be faithful. God has given us a command, and his command that he has given unto us is to be faithful unto death. Uh, you got to be faithful unto death to receive your crown. Not faithful until uh, situations come up that you don't like, or, or faithful until a pandemic may show up. Not faithful until this or that. But you want to be faithful to the end, holding on to the principles, holding on to the, the promises of God. So we certainly do in, encourage each and every one of you, and I'm encouraged myself. I want you to be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your work is not in vain. Your work in the Lord will carry you a great reward. Just hold on, uh, looking unto Jesus, as the scripture says, who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Uh, that's my words of exhortation <laughs> here on today. And I'm excited. I'm excited about the plan and the purposes of God. I truly am happy uh, that God is on our side. If it had not been, uh, as, uh, some, someone has once said, if it had not been for the Lord who is on our side, where would we be? And I often think, I'm going to get into the Bible study, but I often look back over my life of, of where I was and the where uh, I, I am and where I'm going. And I thank God. I thank God because I'm certainly not where I want to be, but I'm certainly not where I used to be. And uh, I'm headed toward that which I want to be. And that's what Paul meant when he said, forgetting those things that are behind, reaching for those things that are before, and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And beloved, that's what we all should be doing. We should be all forgetting those things that held us bound, forgetting those things and those past mistakes and, and reaching uh, for those things that are before us. And then when it comes difficult, we've got to press. You've got to press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Oftentimes, obstacles are going to be in our way, but we can't allow obstacles to stop us because God said that we are more than conquerors through Christ that strengthen us. That's what Paul meant when he said, be strong, be strong, beloved, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And you may be going through some situations and some uh, tests and some trials. And I can say with a surety that everyone, even under the sound of my voice, is experiencing something. But the common denominator is the Lord. And the Bible says, and it tells us, to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not lean to our own understanding, but acknowledge God in all of our ways and he will direct your path. So as we begin, as we begin our Bible study on today, uh, we want to finish up with Matthew chapters number seven. Uh, we were dealing with the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, Jesus uh, was establishing kingdom principles, what I like to call kingdom salvation. And this is part number four of kingdom salvation. And we'll be wrapping up this particular series, moving on to the next. And um, God will get glory after this. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God will get glory after this. So when you have opportunity, make sure that you uh, go uh, back on our Facebook page or even in our YouTube page um, uh, under Christian Ministries. We're on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, look over these series 
and uh, compile them together and study them for yourself, which uh, gives us the principles of, of salvation, the principles of the kingdom. That's what this Sermon on the Mount does for an individual. It gives you uh, the teachings of Jesus Christ in a nutshell. Uh, so as we look then at Matthew chapter number 7 and uh, verse number 1, it says, Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. So what Jesus is talking about here is, uh, he's saying, uh, you don't, uh, you, you don't, how can I say it? He's saying that uh, it's not wrong to judge individuals, uh, meaning that it's not wrong to examine an individual's life and determine what they're doing is right or wrong. Um, uh, judgment is a prerogative and you need to be able to judge between good and evil, between good and evil behavior. And you need to discern uh, uh, those people that are in your life that are good influences or bad influences. The scripture says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So you have to judge whether or not people are giving you ungodly counsel nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So you've got to be able to judge. So, but what Jesus is saying is, is that you have to be able to judge righteously without casting sentence or casting blame upon anybody. We don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in. We can't say that uh, uh, this person is saved, this person is not saved. That's not our, that's not our goal. That's not what we uh, are here for to do. But what Jesus is saying is, is that don't look down on anybody. Uh, don't uh, uh, cast a disparaging um, uh, remark about someone uh, in the midst of trying to tear them down. What Jesus is saying, you know, um, um, don't put harsh and undue punishment upon people. Don't look at them judgmental while you're trying to promote yourself up as somebody that's better than someone else. That's what Jesus is talking about. So when he says, um, when he says, um, uh, Matthew chapter number seven, Verse number one, it says, Judge not that ye be not judged, for with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. So whatever sentence or how, whatever judgment you put on other people, that judgment is going to come around to you. So in other words, watch what you say. Watch what you think about other people and about other people's actions. He doesn't mean, once again, that you can't discern from good for evil or from good or bad, whether or not you're going to participate or whether or not you're not going to participate. He's not talking about that kind of judgment. He's talking about the judgment wherein you look down upon others and say that they're not saved or they're saved or, and, and, and looking down upon them to promote yourself and that you are a better person. So notice what he says. Verse number two uh, says, For what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what judgment ye shall be judged, with uh, the same measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Verse number three, And while beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, Jesus is going back now to his uh, carpentry days when he's, uh, making these statements here. He's going back to his carpentry days. So he's saying, in, uh, in a sense, he's saying, uh, why beholdest thou the moat? Uh, the moat is a tiny speck. Why beholdest thou the moat that is in thy brother's eye and consider not the beam that is in thine own eye? Here Jesus is making hyperbole. 
uh, he's, he's, he's overstating the point. And, and you get the point. He's saying first, uh, verse number four, says, Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote uh, out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thy own eye. Verse number five, he says, Thou hypocrite, cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to cast out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. So that's self-explanatory. Jesus is saying, uh, take care of your own issues uh, before you look to take care of somebody else's issues. Uh, take care of your own faults and your own problems before you look to, to see and to cast disparaging remarks on somebody else, else's problems or somebody else's faults. Uh, the William brothers, uh, they had a, a song. They said, take six months uh, to sweep around your own front door. Uh, no, 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 that's not what I want to say. He said, they talk about, uh, take six months to mind your own business, and then the other six months, uh, leave other people's business alone. So that's, that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, uh, 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 take care of your own issues. We've got a lot of issues, uh, personally speaking. If you take inventory of your own self, better your own self, then you try to look on others to cast doubt, to cast disparaging marks, to tear other people down. That's what he's saying here. In this particular scripture. Now, if, if it's obvious that if you see your brother and sister in need or you need to help them to correct them so that they can do better, uh, we're supposed to do that. Uh, the scripture gives us uh, authority to do that. But what Jesus is coming against is a hypocrite, uh, someone that is living a raggedy life. And um, they're looking down on everybody else to pull them down, to point fingers at them when they're not taking care of their own issues. You got to take care of your own issues. Uh, notice the scripture. Uh, Jesus said to Peter, uh, Simon, Simon, the devil, Satan, has desired to sift you as wheat. But notice what Jesus says. He says, I, I prayed for you that your faith will fail not. Notice, he said, when thou art converted, when thou art strengthened, when thou have made the change, strengthen thy brother. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And that's what, that should be our uh, desire, that when I take care of my own issues uh, in a particular area, then I can turn and help to comfort others with the same grace that God has comforted me with. And that's another point that Jesus is making here in these uh, beginning statements of this particular chapter. He's saying that have compassion on other people and with a desire to help them, not to tear them down. Um, that's the mindset of Jesus. Jesus, he didn't come to this world to destroy men. He came to this world to save to save that which is lost. Amen? And that has to be our goal. That has to be our purpose. To save, to help, to strengthen, to renew, revive. Not to cast the disparaging marks. Not to uh, operate in, in coordination with the devil. Because the devil, he came to kill, steal, and to destroy. And we should not be on his team. But we should be on the Lord's team. Jesus says, I came that you might have life and that more abundantly. We should come to help people to have life and that more abundantly. So we see here, my God, uh, notice this, this is a good segue into what Jesus is saying next. He's saying, give not that which is holy unto dogs. Uh, Neither cast your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. So that goes to our next segue about helping people in the kingdom. 
What Jesus is saying is, is that uh, 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 in Jesus' day, dogs and pigs were considered uh, unholy or ungodly animals. Uh, in this respect, uh, in their time, uh, they, those dogs were savages. They, they roamed the streets and, and they ate any and everything. And um, they, they lived uh, uh, not uh, lives that were to be admired. Even the eating of pigs were forgetting, forbidden by the Jews. So, um, so uh, animals uh, or dogs and, and, and pigs in, in Jewish times, in Jewish days, were looked down upon. So what Jesus is saying is, is that uh, when you're witnessing to someone and telling them about the kingdom, uh, he's saying, you know, if they're telling you that they don't want it, uh, move on. You know, don't, don't, don't try to force this gospel upon somebody uh, that doesn't want it. Because notice what he says. He says, give not that which is holy unto dogs, Neither cast your pearls. Pearls are something that's precious. And he's talking about the gospel. Least they turn and trample you under feet and rend you again. So move on, Jesus is saying. Uh, those that don't want this gospel, after the first and second admonition, you know, reject them. Move on. Uh, unless they get a heart to repent and come and ask you about the way of salvation, then you tell them. Notice, then he says, he moves to verse number seven. We're in Matthew chapter number seven, verse number seven. He says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone that asketh, receive it. And he that findeth, and, uh, and he that seeketh, findeth. And he that knocketh, it shall be opened. So what Jesus is saying here is when you ask, he's saying literally asking in prayer. But he's also saying when you ask in prayer, be aware of your need. Amen. You've got to be aware that, that you have needs with God. And all the time that you're being and noticing that you have needs with God, it it, you should have a continual prayer life. Why? Because you have needs. You'll always have needs as long as you are in this earthly tabernacle living this life. So uh, he's saying that be aware of that all the time. The Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And a poor person uh, recognizes that they're always in need. I'm always in need. That's why we always should cry out to the Lord. So he says, ask, meaning that you're being aware of your need. And then he says, seek. To seek means to pursue the will of God concerning your needs. <laughs> so that God can provide your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. But the key to that particular statement is, is you're seeking the will of God concerning your need. You want to seek God concerning your need. Amen? Because if it's not God's will, you shouldn't want it. If it's not the will of God for you to have it, you shouldn't want it. But and also, too, if it's God's will for you to do certain things, then you should desire to do it according to the will of God. Amen. So so he's saying seek, uh, seek what? Seek the will of God. Amen. Then he says to knock. And that word to knock means to be persistent. I say it's the three P's to be persistent and to persevere and to prevail. When you have a need or a desire that you're asking God for, you want to ask God, Lord, do it according to your will, and you want to pursue uh, whatever the will God is. And then you want to be persistent 
until you prevail. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God. And, and that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, ask, seek, and knock. Thank you, Lord. So, so those are different awarenesses of prayer. And those are differences of levels of prayer that an individual needs to take to obtain that which they need and desire from God. Because I need to move on, but but when you're when you're when you're seeking God, uh, the Bible says, James says that some people ask and they ask amiss so that they can consume it upon their own lust. But when you when you're in the process of, of seeking God, God can reveal your heart whether or not your desire is a godly desire or an evil desire or a lustful desire. Thank you, Lord. And in that process, God can purify your heart so that you can ask uh, uh, and ask not amiss. Thank you, Lord. When, you, when God reveals your heart in prayer, you humble yourself and you sanctify your heart, you change your will and your desire to the will and to the desire of God, and then you can pursue and be persistent and prevail until the will of God is done. Thank you, Lord. My God, my God, my God, my God. This is beautiful. This is beautiful information if you receive it in the name of Jesus. Now, uh, let us move on to verse um, number nine. We in uh, Matthew chapter seven, verse number nine. And he says, verse number nine, he says, or what man is there of you who if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? So he's still talking about Receiving in prayer. Notice what he says. If ye being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? That, hey man, God. How much more? How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him? Amen? Now, now what he's saying is, is that God knows what you need before you know what you need. And you being a good parent, uh, with all your limitations, with all of your faults, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more God, <laughs> thank you Lord, who is holy, thank you Lord, who has power, who has might, uh, how much more shall he give good things to them that ask him? So it's God's will that not any man should perish, but it is God's will that God will bless you. The blessings of the Lord is upon your life if you seek to do good and live a holy, righteous life. So we see here, uh, verse number 12, and he says, for these things, uh, for therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men do to you, do even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So what Jesus is describing here is the golden rule, the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Anytime uh, you need to make a decision about how to treat or do to anybody, you just first have to stop and say, well, how would I want to be treated? How would I want to be respected? And, and, and do that to other people. Uh, if you can stop and think about your actions and your deeds and the words which you are about to say and the actions you are about to take and say, would I want someone to say that to me? Would I want someone to do that to me? Uh, if you do a self-check first, uh, then you will come out with the right answer. If you want people to do it to you, then it's more than likely it's a right thing to do. 
That's what Jesus is saying, the golden rule. And he says this, Therefore, whatever things ye would that men should do to you, do even to us also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Notice then, verse uh, 13. Yeah, in these particular verses, Jesus is getting ready to give uh, four warnings. He's getting ready to give four warnings. He's getting ready to uh, uh, show uh, uh, these warnings in a particular, uh, if you to say, parable type of way. So verse 13, he's talking about gates. He says, in the end at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And, and many there be which go there thereat. Uh, the Hebrews as uh, a way of teaching. They, they teach in a way, if you really study the book of Proverbs or you study uh, the book of, of Psalms, it, it tells you uh, uh, good and evil. It divides good and evil. God presents before you a good way. And the devil presents before you a bad way. So God is always giving you a choice. Uh, uh, choose you this day whom you're going to uh, serve. And uh, uh, the prophet said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So it's a choice. It's a choice. So Jesus is giving you the right answer to choices. <laughs> so notice what he says. He says, enter into the straight gate. For uh, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And, and, and many there be which go in thereat. So Jesus is saying, enter in at the straight gate. Uh, follow the true and narrow way. Don't be like everybody else. Don't follow everybody else. Everybody else is going in at the broad gate or the wide way. And that way leads to destruction. You don't want to go that way. Notice then, verse 14, he gives you the answer. He said, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life. If you want to find life, you've got to follow Jesus. You can't follow every wind of doctrine. You can't follow every spiritual being. You've got to follow after Jesus. He's the way. He's the truth. He's the life. <laughs> Hallelujah. No man comes unto the Father but by him. Ah, and Jesus says, the word says, there's no other name given unto men that men must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Amen. So, so don't follow after uh, Buddha. Don't go after Muhammad. Don't go after, uh, 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 I don't even know who else to call, but don't go after those folks. Go after Jesus. Amen. All right. So we see here, uh, verse Number 14, it says, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that which leadeth to life. And few, just a few, many are called, but just a few are chosen. Notice what he says. And a few there be that find it. My God, there's a lot of people that are claiming salvation, but if they're not living the life, if they're not being a true disciple, then they're going to meet destruction. Amen? Hallelujah. My God, my God. Now notice what Jesus says. Uh, verse 15. He says, beware of false prophets. That, see how it leads into that? Beware of false prophets. So if there are false prophets, there must be true prophets. Amen? And you know a false prophet by their life. You know a true prophet by their life. Jesus said, he made a profound statement in, in St. John chapter 15. He says, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man. Uh, so if there's a true vine, 
then there has to be a false vine. And you want to follow after the true vine. And that true vine is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So notice what he says. He says, verse 15, uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, uh, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Verse number 6, Ye shall know them by their fruits. You know a false prophet by their fruits. That by their fruits means what they produce, their lifestyle. So, so when you, that's what I meant when I said when you uh, go back to judging uh, the first verse uh, in chapter number seven, where it says, judge not that ye be not judged. Uh, that's why I said Jesus was not talking about you evaluating someone's life. Uh, when he said, when he talked about judging not, he was talking about uh, don't cast a disparaging uh, downfall on people to judge whether or not they saved or unsaved or, or you trying to judge them to elevate yourself. But you have a right to examine the lifestyle of the people to whom you are allowing to influence you. You have a right, thank you, Lord, to, to, to make a, a judgment call, uh, whether or not to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Uh, you have a right to, 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 to look at people and, and examine what type of fruit they're bearing, whether or not you're going to take their counsel. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, and that's permissible in the scriptures. And you better, <laughs> my God, I don't want to threaten anybody, but you should take heed and, and uh, uh, because evil communications corrupt good manners. Amen. You've got to take heed to who you listen to and to who is feeding your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. My God, my God. I'm talking to somebody here today. Notice what he said. Uh, verse 14, I'm sorry, uh, verse 15. Uh, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So ye shall know them by their fruits. Uh, do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. That's why I said you better take heed to who you are listening to, uh, to what individual is pouring into your life. Beware of false prophets, those that are prophesying to you about the will of the Lord. You better check out their lives and see what kind of lifestyle they're living. Amen. Uh, whether or not the purpose and the plan of God is coming true in their own lives. My God. Hallelujah. God, God be the glory. Hallelujah. So, so, you know, the scripture says, if the blind lead the blind, they're all going to fall into the ditch. You don't want to follow false prophets. You don't want to follow false preachers and false teachers and false disciples. You want to enter in at the straight gate, the narrow way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right, let me move on. Notice then. Um, uh, uh, verse... Verse uh, 20, he says, Wherefore, by their fruits shall you know them. By what they're producing, that's how you're going to know whether or not they're a good prophet or a bad prophet. Amen? A good leader or a bad leader. Uh, a good pastor or a bad pastor. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now notice, verse uh, 21. It says, not everyone uh, that saith unto me, 
Lord, Lord. Now he's still talking about evil people. He's saying, not everyone is a warning. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Notice what he says. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we not cast out uh, devils? And in thy name have, have we done many wonderful works? Verse 23, and he says, And then will I confess, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Now notice, Jesus is saying, this is part of his warning. He's saying, now, beware of false disciples, people who say and, and that Jesus is their Lord when uh, they do evil works. They do works of iniquity. Um, and they don't do the will of God. Jesus is saying, beware even of your own self. Uh, let a man examine himself on whether or not he's in the faith. And that simply means, are you living a lifestyle that lines up with the word of God? You, you're going to be judged by the word of God. And, and technically, in reality, uh, uh, you're being judged right now uh, so that you can make the proper changes if necessary. If this word finds you out, if you are doing things that, that are contrary to the scriptures or contrary to the will of God, uh, Paul brings them out in Galatians and Ephesians. He talks about the works of the flesh. If you are doing any of those things, lying, stealing, fornicating, cheating, uh, and so on and so forth, you have to turn from those things now and get your life right. For this is the judgment of God unto you. In other words, you want to repent. Uh, ask God to forgive you of all of your sins. And that word repentance means having a change in the heart to make a change in your life. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you're standing somewhere just crying and weeping over the sin that you've committed. That's fine. That's well and good. But what's key is the change. Hallelujah. The turning. The, the making up in your mind that I'm not going to go in that direction. I'm not going to continue that behavior. I'm going to go the straight and narrow way. That's what God wants to see. That's what God wants for your life. Amen. So, so, so when, when it comes time uh, uh, for judgment, he can say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Enter ye into the joy of the Lord. But those that deceive themselves, uh, uh, Jesus is going to say to them, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. People who are workers of iniquity are those that have not subscribed to the righteous behavior of God. They have not uh, uh, internalized and perform the righteous behaviors that God requires in his scriptures. Ha, ah, hallelujah, my God. I'm, I'm waiting for some amens. <laughs> hallelujah, my God. So we see here, um, uh, verse 23. I want to go back, I'm sorry. Let me hit uh, verse uh, 21 again. He says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So he said, not everybody that's saying unto me, Lord, Lord, shall make it in. So, so everybody that's calling him Lord, um, the question is, are they, are they really submitted to Jesus? If you're calling him Lord, the question is, are you submitted to Jesus? in all areas of life. 
If he were to, in which he will, examine every area of your life, will he come out and say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Will you be without spot? Will you be without blemish of, or any such? And uh, the answer is, with the help of the Lord, by his power, by his might. There may be some areas that I'm working on that I've reckoned myself dead to. Uh, but I know I need some still some extensive help. As long as I am uh, abstaining, as long as I am striving, the Lord will impute righteousness unto me. We need the Lord. We need his help. Uh, if, if I struggle with lying, then, then I confess God. God, help me, I'm a liar. And I need your help. Uh, Lord, strengthen me that I may overcome my lying tongue, my lying spirit. And if you have that type of attitude while you're pressing, uh, hallelujah, God will impute righteousness unto you. God will help you. Why? Because he see you reaching. He see you pressing. But if you just give in to your flesh and say, well, the Lord knows my heart. Ah, that's, 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 that's foolishness. <laughs> you can't go by that. You've got to resist evil. Hey, glory. My God, you've got to resist the devil. Steadfast. Hallelujah. You've got to put up a fight. Ha! Ah, hallelujah. That's what God wants to see. You may be struggling. We all struggle in different areas. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You won't be fully perfected until you leave this earth. Hallelujah. So you're always uh, going to have uh, a need to seek after God, to ask God for help. Hey, hallelujah. And if you, Bible says, come boldly to the throne of grace. If you come to God and be honest with God and say, Lord, I need your help. And the Bible says you'll find grace to help you in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. God will strengthen you and give you what you need so you'll be able to overcome Every situation, every demonic power, hallelujah, that comes your way. So we are without excuse. Hey, hallelujah, God has given us power. Hey, hallelujah, God has given us an anointing. God has given us grace. God has given us mercy. God has given us a straight and narrow way. Wherein if we cry out to God, if we seek his face, if we turn from our wicked ways, God will hear from heaven. Ah, he'll forgive your sins and he'll heal your land. Hallelujah, beloved. My God. So notice then, notice what Jesus said in, in verse 23. And he says, <laughs> those that work iniquity, uh, those that are inspired by the devil. He says, I will then profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, uh, ye worker of iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. Oh my God. Uh, this reminds me, I got to move on, but this reminds me of when Cain had sinned, killed his brother. And got put out of the, the garden or got put out from the presence of God. They already were put out of the garden. But got put out of the presence of God. Uh, Cain turned to God and said, my, my, my punishment is too great for me to bear. To hear those words, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity. Ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. Those words would be too much for anybody to hear. And no doubt they would hear those words because they'll be conscious uh, 
being separated from God in the lake of fire. My God, my God, my God. That's enough right there to motivate an individual to do right. Hey, that's enough right there uh, to, mo to promote an individual to seek after God with all their heart. When you see a warning sign on the pack of cigarettes that says warning, this product, I don't know if it says could or would, cause cancer. That should, that should motivate you to say, hey, I'm not going to continue smoking because it's detrimental to my health. We should say, hey, I'm not going to continue in sin that grace may abound. God forbid. Uh, that should give you a mind to say, Lord, I'm going to turn from every wicked way so that I can serve you in the beauty of holiness. My God. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. We ought to follow after God. We ought to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our might, with all of our strength. And the only way to do that, my beloved, is to line up with the word of God. I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your body as a living sacrifice, presented to God holy, uh, which is your reasonable service. Uh, just turn, my uh, God, turn from whatever that, 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 that is evil, whatever the stronghold is. My God, God has a way. Uh, God knows how to deliver the godly out of all unrighteousness. My God, there's a way, the Bible says, that seems right unto a man. But the end of that way is death. You have to choose God's way. Hey, my God. All right, now notice, I got to move on. My, my time is uh, just about up. Notice the scripture, verse 24. He says, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, notice, and doeth them. You got to hear this word uh, and do it. <laughs> Don't be a forgetful hearer, but be a doer of the word. He that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, he says, I will liken them unto a wise man uh, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon the rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not uh, shall be like unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. So we see here Jesus is giving a comparison about a good foundation and a bad foundation. A good foundation is built upon the principles of the kingdom of God. A bad foundation are built upon the principles of the world. And obviously you want to build your foundation by following after the principles of God. Because in both areas, winds came, storms came, and, and blew upon those houses, or blew upon the houses. What made the difference was the foundation. Hey, my God. What makes the difference in your life is your foundation. Whether or not you're going to be able to stand every storm and every test of life. Uh, storms are coming. Tests and trials are coming. They will never cease until you pass from this age or this dispensation. Hallelujah. Ah, but you can have a guarantee. You can have a, a guarantee that you will never fall. Hallelujah. If you build your house upon the rock, and that rock is Jesus. <laughs> He's that rock. Hallelujah. He's that anchor. So notice then, this is a scary point that we're going to come to. He says, and it came to pass when Jesus had ended 
these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. And what that simply means was they heard what Jesus was saying and they were amazed. They were astonished at, at what he was saying. They were astonished at his doctrine. But astonishment doesn't mean commitment. <laughs> you can hear a wonderful word and be spellbound. But if that word doesn't transform your life and you don't commit to the principles of that word, it's meaningless. Uh, you can be astonished all you want. You can be amazed all you want. But what God is calling for, beloved, is commitment. Paul, when he preached, he preached to kings, King Agrippa. And he preached unto him Jesus, being the Savior of the world, the one that would give his life, and that in giving his life, he was raised up again and seated at the right hand of God, expecting to the enemies became his footstool. And the king said, Paul, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul said, uh, I, I would let you not only be persuaded, but be as I am, only accept these bonds. It, it is meaningless for an individual to be almost persuaded. <laughs> You've got to be persuaded. You've got to take on what the Bible says about Christ. You've got to sell all that you have. You've got to seek after God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. You've got to come to terms and say, I'm going to lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset me. That I'm going to live up to this word. I'm going to seek God for the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get baptized in the name of Jesus. I'm going to love my enemies and do good to them that hate me and despitefully use me. I'm going to do unto others as I would have them to do unto me. I'm not going to judge people. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to be committed to God. I'm going to love God with all my heart, with all my might, and with all my strength. And I'm going to love my neighbor as myself. Therein is the two greatest commandments. My brother, brother and sisters, I pray that this word and this word has found lodging in your heart. I pray with all my heart and my strength that you pray for me as I pray for you that we be committed unto the end. To hear him say at that day, well done, thy good and faithful servant, in the end, to the joy of the Lord. That's Kingdom Principles, part number four. We certainly hope that this word has found lodging in your heart. Uh, please, please be free to uh, give, give on our website. We have PayPal. You're able to give that way. You're able to give through Tidely. You're able to mail your uh, love offerings to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street, Erie, PA, 16508. And you're able to give uh, by dropping your love offerings in our drop box, which is secure. But beyond Above all of this and above all of that, I'd rather you give your heart to Jesus. <laughs> I'd rather you give your soul ah, to Jesus Christ. My God, I'd rather, hallelujah, that you come unto him. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and so that he could give you rest. Ah, my God. 
The joy that comes with knowing Jesus is unspeakable and full of glory. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that those that are under the sound of my voice, that need deliverance, that need breakthroughs, I pray, Lord, that you give them the breakthrough. Ah, I pray, Lord, that you baptize them in your name and fill them with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, that you make every crooked place straight. Hallelujah, that you fulfill all of their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you bless them, that they'll be a witness unto you and unto your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the blood of Jesus wash them and cleanse them from all unrighteousness, from all sin. Hey, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Beloved, I love you. And I pray that God will continue to strengthen you and give you all that you need. Uh, I pray that God will open up new doors and new horizons and new pathways to greater success than you can ever imagine. And to do that, just trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean to your own understanding. Just acknowledge God in all of your ways and your God will direct your path. Until we meet again, Sunday at 10 a.m. at Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. The doors of the church are open. Uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, protocols are in place. Thank you, Lord. And we uh, just had the church sterilized. We have it done every two weeks. And people are required to wear their masks and social distance and use hand sanitizer. My God, I pray that you come on out and hear a word from the Lord. Fellowship with your brothers and sisters. And we uh, thank God for each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.